Hello? Who's there? Is there anyone alive out there? Wait, you don't look like the Arlesser's guards. Are you from outside the castle? My name is Jowan. I'm a mage Lady Isold hired to tutor her son, Connor. Until they, uh, threw me into the dungeon here. You don't know? I thought everyone knew. I poisoned Arl Eamon. I'm not proud of it. The Arlesa had no idea what I was hired to do when she took me in to tutor Connor. I... I know it looks suspicious, but I'm not responsible for the creatures and the killings in the castle. I was already imprisoned when all that began. At first, Lady Isolde came here with her men, demanding that I reverse what I'd done. I thought she meant my poisoning of the Arl. That's the first I heard about the walking corpses. She thought I'd summoned a demon to torment her family and destroy Redcliffe. She had me tortured. There was nothing I could do or say that would appease her. So they left me to rot. I was instructed to by Terran Loghain. I was told that Arl Eamon was a threat to Ferelden. That if I dealt with him, Loghain would settle matters with the Circle. You see, I'm a Malifica. A blood mage. You? A blood mage? Truly? I would never have guessed. A blood mage? Well, that isn't good. I dabbled in the Forbidden Arts, and they condemned me to death for it. I thought Loghain was giving me a chance to redeem myself. But he's abandoned me here, hasn't he? Everything's fallen apart, and I'm responsible! I have to make it right somehow. I have to! Connor had started to show... signs. Lady Isolde was terrified the Circle of Magi would take him away for training. Connor? A mage? I can't believe it. She sought an apostate, a mage outside the Circle, to teach her son in secret so he could learn to hide his talent. Her husband had no idea. Because he would be taken away, forever. A mage cannot inherit a title, even the son of a powerful Arl. She's also a pious woman. Her son having magic was... humiliating. No, she was adamant that he never find out. She said that he'd do the right thing, even if it meant losing their son, and that infuriated her. Son. But he's still very young. He can barely cast a minor spell, never mind something more powerful. At least not intentionally. I have thought about it, and it's possible Connor could have inadvertently done something to tear open the veil. With the veil to the Fade torn, spirits and demons could infiltrate the castle. Powerful ones could kill and create those walking corpses. I never meant for it to end like this. I swear. Let me help you fix this. I say this boy could still be of use to us, but if not, then let him go. Why keep him prisoner here? Hey, hey, let's not forget he's a blood mage. You can't just set a blood mage free. Better to slay him. Better to punish him for his choices. Is this Alistair who speaks, or the Templar? I'd say it's common sense. We don't even know the whole story yet. He wishes to redeem himself. Doesn't everyone deserve that chance? Like yourself, you mean? Everyone deserves a chance to redeem themselves in the Maker's eyes. This man, no less than any. I don't know. He is a blood mage. But this is an unusual situation. Give me a chance, please. I... well, I tried to save anyone still up there. There must be something I can do. I don't think it will redeem me, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't try. Afterwards, I assume I'll be arrested, or executed, or whatever people like me get. I'm tired of running from the Circle. I need to account for what I've done. I'd stay and try to help if I could. 
Perhaps I can help deal with whatever's been unleashed here. I'm glad you think so. So what now? You're letting me out? And what then? I'm not sure that's a good idea. I'd like to help out, but I'm not so sure I want to follow you into danger, exactly. I won't, I promise. I will find a way to fix this somehow. Of course.
allow me. I could do that for you. Right away.
Scrap right ahead. <laughs> will be done.
very well. Please, don't hurt me. I, I'm sorry. I'm so frightened. These monsters are everywhere. My, my name's Valena. The Arlesa's maid. Is she? All right. What happened to everyone? You know my father. I want to go back to the village. Is there a way out of here? But, but the monsters! I'll find my way. I can run fast and I know the castle. Thank you. Yes. Allow me. I could do that for you. It will be done. will be done. You have opened the gates. That is good. My men and I are eager to see our Arl again. Shall we enter the main hall together? It must be held if we are to regain control of the castle. Excellent. 
Let us go now, then, and see what awaits us there. So these are our visitors. The ones you told me about, Mother. Yes, Connor. And this is the one who defeated my soldiers. The ones I sent to reclaim my village. Yes. And now it's staring at me. What is it, Mother? I can't see it well enough. This is an elf, Connor. You... You've seen elves before. We have them here in the castle. Oh, I remember. I had their ears cut off and fed to the dogs. The dogs chewed for hours. <laughs> Shall I send it to the kennels, Mother? Connor, I beg you. Don't hurt anyone. M Mother? What? What's happening? Where am I? Oh, thank the Maker. Connor. Connor, can you hear me? Get away from me, fool woman! You are beginning to bore me! Make us breath. What has happened here? Grey Warden, please don't hurt my son. He is not responsible for what he does. No! Don't say that! So, the boy has become an abomination and sundered the veil. Connor didn't mean to do this. It was that mage, the one who poisoned Demon. He started all this. He summoned this demon. Connor was just trying to help his father. And made a deal with the demon to do so? Foolish child. It was a fair deal. Father is a liar. Just as I wanted. Now it's my turn to sit on the throne and send out armies to conquer the world. Nobody tells me what to do anymore. Nobody tells him what to do. Nobody! Ha 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 ha! Quiet, Uncle! I warned you what would happen if you kept shouting, didn't I? Yes, I did. But let's keep things civil. This woman will have the audience she seeks. Tell us, woman, what have you come here for? So you're a concerned well-wisher. Why didn't you say that in the first place? All the sneaking around and killing is so unnecessary. But father is so very ill. We really shouldn't disturb him. Isn't that right, mother? I... I don't think... Of course you don't. Ever since you sent the knights away, you do nothing but deprive me of my fun. Frankly, it's getting dull. I crave excitement and action. This woman spoiled my sport by saving that stupid village. And now she'll repay me. Enemy there. My mind is my own again. Blessed Andraste. I would never have forgiven myself had you died. Not after I brought you here. The fool I am. Please. Connor's not responsible for this. There must be some way we can save him. I... Yes. 
I didn't tell you because I believed we could help him. I still do. I'm sorry, my lady, but Connor has become an abomination. He's no longer your son. You! You did this to Connor! I didn't. I didn't summon any demon. I told you. Please, if you'll let me help. Help? You betrayed me! I brought you here to help my son, and in return you poisoned my husband? This is the mage you spoke of? Didn't you say he was in the dungeon? He was. I assumed the creatures had killed him by now. He must have been set free. How dare you! If this man hadn't poisoned my husband, none of this would have happened. He should be executed. Your secrecy made his actions possible, Isolde. But I... I know what you must think of me, my lady. I took advantage of your fear. I'm sorry. I never knew it would come to this. Well, I shan't turn away his help. Not yet. And if Connor is truly an abomination... He's not always the demon you saw. Connor is still inside him, and sometimes he breaks through. Please, I just want to protect him. Isn't that what started this? You hired the mage to teach Connor in secret, to protect him. If they discovered Connor had magic, then they'd take him away. I thought if he learned just enough to hide it, then... Upstairs in his room. I think the demon has been keeping him alive. So if we destroy the demon, then... Then my husband may perish. Yes. I think he ran upstairs. To the family quarters. Violence scares him. I, I know that sounds strange. He may have run up to his room or... I don't know. The fighting may have scared Connor into coming out again, and so he ran. So you're saying he may be vulnerable? I... perhaps. Is there... is there no other way? The demon in Connor needs to be destroyed. Killing Connor is the easiest way to do that, certainly. But there is another way. A mage could confront the demon in the Fade, without hurting Connor himself. What do you mean? Is the demon not within Connor? Not physically. The demon approached Connor in the Fade while he dreamt, and controls him from there. We can use the connection between them to find the demon. You can enter the Fade, then? And kill the demon w without hurting my boy? No, but I can enable another mage to do so. It normally requires lyrium and, and several mages, but I have blood magic. Lyrium provides the power for the ritual, but I can take that power from someone's life energy. This ritual requires a lot of it, however. All of it, in fact. So, someone must die? Someone must be sacrificed? Yes, and then we send another mage into the Fade. I can't enter because I'm doing the ritual. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. It's not much of an option. The power has to come from somewhere, and that means either lyrium or blood. Then let it be my blood. I will be the sacrifice. What? Isolde, are you mad? Eamon would never allow this. Either someone kills my son to destroy that thing inside him, or I give my life so my son can live. To me, the answer is clear. Blood magic. How can more evil be of any help here? Two wrongs don't make a right. It does seem like a sensible choice, with a willing participant. Connor is blameless in this. He should not have to pay the price. It... Uh... It's up to you, my friend. You know more about such things than I do, and it's your companion going into the Fade. The decision is yours.
You can find Lyrium and more mages at the Circle of Magi, if they would even do it. That is an excellent point. One of the tree... The tower is about a day's journey across the lake. You could attempt to get the mages' help. But what will happen here? Connor will not remain passive forever. Very well. I will keep Jowan here as a precaution. He says he wants to help, so he will keep an eye on Connor with us. Go to the tower quickly, then. The longer you are away, the greater the chances of disaster. I do not like this talk of possessions and spirits and, and the magic.
Oh, thank the Maker. We need help. They attacked the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them. Of course. Trap right ahead. I would wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Ah, so I am to be interrogated. Let me save you some time. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens. Which I have failed at, sadly. So would I be, in your shoes. For me, however, it sets a rather poor precedent, doesn't it? Getting captured by a target seems a tad detrimental to one's budding assassin career. Yes, it's true. Too bad for me. I can tell you that. They are an order of assassins out of Antiva. Very powerful, and renowned for always getting the job done, so to speak. Someone went to great expense to hire this man. Quite right. I'm surprised you haven't heard much of the crows out here. Back where I come from, we're rather infamous. Oh, fine. Is that what you Fereldens do? Mock your prisoners? <laughs> Such cruelty. Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. I have no idea what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine, you throw... Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. Oh, well, that's between Logan and the Crows, and between the Crows and myself. Isn't that what we're establishing now? I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results, if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the Crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> no. no, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? I wasn't paid anything. The crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a chantry mouse, come to think of it. 
Being an Antivan Crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. Well, aside from a distinct lack of ambition, I suppose it's because I wasn't given much of a choice. The Crows bought me young. I was a bargain, too. But don't let my sad story influence you. The Crows aren't so bad. They keep one well supplied. Wine, women, men, whatever. Though the whole severance package is garbage, let me tell you. If you're considering joining, I'd really think twice about it. You seem like a bright girl. I'm sure you have other options. <laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. Very well. Ask, and thou shalt re- Then, unless you're quite stuck on cutting my throat or something equally gruesome, perhaps you'd care to hear a proposal. Unsuccessfully. Besides, someone in your position can't take these things so personally, can you? Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause, so let me serve you instead. I happen to be a very loyal person, up until the point where someone... Ex That's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you're the sort who would do the same thing, in which case I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Possibly. I happen to know their wily ways, however. I can protect myself as well as you. And if not, well, it's not as if I had many alternatives to start with, is it? Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice, and would make... And somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I am yours. Is that fair? Why? Because I am skilled at many things, from fighting to st- I could also warn you should the Antivan Crows attempt something more sophisticated now. I could also stand around and look pretty if you prefer. Warm your bed. Fend off unwanted suitors, no? These things you say... They must drive the men back home. So, what shall it be? I'll even shine armor. You won't find a better deal, I promise. What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? Hmm. All right. All right. I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. A fine plan, but I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. Welcome, Zivran. Having an Antivan Crow join us sounds like a fine plan. Oh, you are another companion to be, then? I wasn't aware such loveliness existed amongst adventurers, surely. Or maybe not. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear.
very well. You have some kind of problem. Oh? What is this about? How sad it is to see a Grey Warden manipulated. Man, let's teach the Grey... built their tower out in the middle of Lake Color. Of course. No. They have an aversion to practicality or something. As you say. Yes. Client is very pleased. Come back soon. It will be done. Wow, I've never seen one of you knife ears dressed like the King of Ferelden before. You made good for yourself, eh? Oh, I don't mean no offense. I know I shoot my mouth off. I'm just not used to your kind, trussed up all fancy. Oh, there I go again. I don't mean nothing by it. I swear I should... I should... I'm mighty pleased to be making your acquaintance, miss. Mocking? No, no, I was just saying it's nice to meet someone such as yourself. I'm the ferryman. Leastwise, I used to be. Poor old Kester. Out. Gregor just came down and said, Don't you worry, Kester. We got it all under control, we do. And then he puts Carol in charge of my boat. Lissy. Named for my grandmum, she was. He's Knight Commander of the Templars up in the tower. Good man. I told you, they didn't tell me nothing. And if I know they're mages, I'm better off keeping out of... If I had to guess, I'd guess it had to do with magic, but the tower's always got something to do with magic.
You could try swimming, but I don't recommend it. Nasty things in that lake. I reckon it's all them potions. That Gregor's told me to stay here till it blows over, but I'm telling you, some storms don't blow over easy. Maybe you could at that. I'm sure your mind's all afire now, eh? Well, I reckon it's good for them mages. Gather them all, learn them. I know what they say about mages, but the Maker made them for a purpose. If you can't trust him, who can you trust? Oh, I can't say that. I'm lucky he's good enough to give me the time of day. The first enchanter's all right. He's polite as can be, but he's always a little distant if you get my drift. But Gregor, he's a man to be respected, that Gregor. All right. As you say. Water down hill, damp bed, rickety stools. Why do I even bother? Can a, what are you looking at? Can a man drink in peace? Yes. All right. Let me take a look. Why? What did he do to deserve this? Good day, and welcome to the Spoiled Princess. Is there something I can get for you? It was my father's idea. He ran the inn before me, and he named it for my sister. She was his little princess. Princess decided the country was too dull for her and moved to Denerim. More glamorous, she said. Well, she was found murdered, robbed of all the trinkets my father bought her with his hard-earned money. My father died of shock and heartbreak. Mother stopped eating, and I got the struggling in. The name stuck. That's a story. Of course. What would you like?
It will be done. You! You're not looking to get across to the tower, are you? Because I have strict orders not to let anyone pass. I am the person appointed to stop all unauthorized access to the Circle Tower. Meaning you, because you're unauthorized. Oh, you're a Grey Warden, are you? Prove it. Kill some Darkspawn. Come on, let's see some righteous Grey Wardening. Ugh, semantics. Anyway, it was nice chatting with you. Now, on your way, right now, go. Oh, really? You think Gregor would be upset with me for not letting you in? Wait, actually, he would. Good point. He's the big guy around here. I bet he could deal with one Grey Warden. Alleged Grey Warden. Well, you want that I should take you there now? Come along, I suppose. and I want two men stationed within sight of the doors at all times. Do not open the doors without my express consent. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The doors are barred. Are they keeping people out or in? Now we wait and pray. Who are you? I explicitly told Carol not to bring anyone across the lake. We're dealing with a very delicate situation. You must leave for your own safety. I am weary of the Grey Warden's ceaseless need for men to fight the Darkspawn, but it is their right. You'll find no allies here. The Templars can spare no men, and the mages are indisposed. I shall speak plainly. The tower is no longer under our control. Abominations and demons stalk the tower's halls. The circle is lost. The tower has fallen. We don't know. We saw only demons, hunting Templars and mages alike. I realized we could not defeat them and told my men to flee. They took us by surprise. We were prepared for one or two abominations. Not the horde that fell upon us. I will destroy the tower, raise it to the ground. But I cannot risk more of my men. The doors remain shut, and they will protect us for now. Not just mages. But my Templars also. I had no choice. The abominations must be contained at all costs. We do not mean for the doors to stay closed forever. Everything in the tower must be eliminated. I have sent word to Denerim, calling for reinforcements and the right of annulment. The right of annulment gives Templars the authority to neutralize the Mage Circle. Completely. The Mages are probably already dead. Any abominations remaining in there must be dealt with, no matter what. This situation is dire. There is no alternative. Everything in the tower must be destroyed so it can be made safe again. If any are still alive, the Maker himself has shielded them. 
No one could have survived those monstrous creatures. It is too painful to hope for survivors and find... nothing. I assure you, an abomination is a force to be reckoned with, and you will face more than one. If you succeed, I would owe you much, enough that I would pledge my Templars to your cause. Without word from Denerim, I must determine our course. Surely destroying Darkspawn is a worthy goal. A word of caution. Once you cross that threshold, there is no turning back. The great doors must remain barred. I will open them for no one, until I have proof that it is safe. I will only believe it is over if the first enchanter stands before me and tells me it is so. If Irving has fallen, then the circle is lost and must be destroyed. May Andraste lend you her courage, whatever you decide. Make it. I wish this were over. We're running low on supplies, and I don't know how much longer we'll last. We need the abominations, and... If you have anything to trade, that would be helpful too.
This is too cruel. I will not subject even an animal to the fate. Of course. Very well. So, you truly do not believe in any sort of higher power? It has been bothering you, I see. No, I do not. Must I? What do you believe happens to you after you die? I then. Nothing? I do not go to sit by the Maker's side, if that's what you mean. Only those who are worthy are brought to the Maker's side. So many other sad souls are left to wander in the void, hopeless and forever lost. And what evidence of this have you? <laughs> I see only spirits, no wandering ghosts of wicked disbelievers. It must be so sad to look forward to nothing, to feel no love and seek no reward in the afterlife. Yes, the anguish tears at me so. You have seen through me to my sad, sad core. Now you're simply mocking me. You notice? It appears your perceptive powers know no bounds. Yes. Yes, of course. 